Thanks to all of you who have joined in today for the CME on the Crest Forum. I would like to pay my homage to our dear teacher, par excellence, Dr. Kakarla Subara, an inspiration to numerous radiologists, including me. We're going to talk about breast cancer today, how to pick it up early, or put in another way, how not to miss breast cancers. So <clears throat> we all agree that mammogram is the workhorse for cancer screening. Cancer detection rate is pretty good at 80% above the age of 50 in women. Breast cancer screening results in reduction in mortality by 40%. Mammogram detects three to 10 cancers per thousand screens. Now it's up to you hard, how hard you work to find those cancers. Do you want to be the person detecting three cancers per thousand screen or 10 cancers per thousand screen? So it is important. Technique is extremely important in order not to miss cancer. If you look at the adequacy of this image, you can clearly see that the left pectoralis major on the MLO view is not seen. Most of the breast tissue can be seen on the MLO view. So don't start with a bad image and then miss a cancer as big as a golf ball just because you fail to include the required areas. This was not a breast cancer. This was a lymphoma and treated as such. And the low view is important. You can miss cancers in the axillary region if you have not included the pectoralis major. And sometimes you can't be really sure. Is the region or lesion really in the axilla or is it elsewhere? Because in this case, you're seeing it only on the MLO view, but not on the CC view. Therefore, you will have to triangulate the lesion. How do you do it? You will obtain an additional view, which is the straight ML view, in order to see if it is going up or down on the ML view compared to the MLO view. If it is going up, that is a medial lesion. So you're gonna look for the lesion here, right? And if it goes down, you know it's a lateral lesion. So you're gonna search for it in the lower outer quadrant. If you search in the wrong quadrant, you're not gonna find the lesion. You might find a lymph node like this and say, hey, that's a lymph node. But then you know that when you look at this lesion, these two don't add up. Instead, here is the lesion, which is solid hypoechoic and um, crossing tissue planes. Core biopsy shows invasive ductal cancer. As you know, this is the distribution of different types of cancer. It has an impact on the prognosis of the patient and presentation, et cetera. Breast cancer prognosis depends on how big the tumor is. And what is the status of the lymph node? If the lesion is clinically occult, positivity of lymph nodes is low. If the lesion is palpable, positive of the lymph, positivity of the lymph node is more than twice, right? So we rather pick it up when it is not palpable, that is below to at least one centimeter size is what we are aiming for whereas a palpable lesion is at least two to 2.5 centimeter, by which time 50% of the, 44% um, of the lymph nodes will be positive. Breast cancer prognosis also depends on the tumor grade and type. It depends on the receptor status and lymphovascular invasion. As a radiologist, what can you actually control? All you can control is what size are you picking up that lesion on? If it is a small size, lymph nodes are going to be negative. So you want to pick it up when it is small. That's all you can do. You cannot predict what is the tumor grade, what is the tumor type, where, uh, what are the receptors, all. So as I said, if you don't take a good image, you're going to get, you're going to miss cancers. As in this case, the pectoralis major was not included in the image and therefore a mass as big as a, a golf ball could not be picked up. So here we are, there's a big mass in the left axilla and that was a lymphoma, not a primary breast malignancy. Next case, another lesion in the left axillary area or seen only on the MLO view. 
So it is easy to kind of presume that this lesion is in the axilla, but you do not know it for sure unless you do an additional view to confirm its location. We know it is superior within the left breast, but is it medial in location or lateral in location? You have to do a straight lateral view in order to get that information. If it is medial, it will go up on the ML view. If it is lateral, it will go down on the lateral view. Why is this important? Because if you use an ultrasound to go search for the lesion in the axilla, when it is actually present in the medial breast, you will end up missing the cancer. Here in this case, ultrasound showed a lymph node. So that's the cancer jumping at you in the, on the craniocaudal view laterally. And uh, this is uh, kind of on a single view, you see it as a speculated mass. If you look at the MLO view, there's a bump along the posterior so, Sangeeta, aspect. Please use the pointer, arrow. Yeah. So here's the, big, here's the mass there with speculated margins. And on the MLO view, it's posteriorly positioned. If you just magnify it, you can see the speculations more carefully. So now you know this is a Byrats 5 lesion. And on ultrasound, hypoechoic shadowing lesion, one centimeter size. This is how small we like the lesions to be when we pick them up because the survival rate is 95% and it is independent of the tumor grade. If it is two to five centimeter in size, survival is 60% and it depends on the tumor grade. Therefore, reduction in cancer mortality is possible when the tumor size is small. Therefore, you want to pick it up when it is small. Use whatever tools you have in order to examine the breast so you can pick up the abnormality like this lesion, which is speculated and it is barely visible. If you just breeze through the image, you will not find it. If it is a poor quality image with blurring and uh, uh, unsharpness due to lack of compression, you're going to miss it. So look very carefully and find the speculated teeny tiny lesion which will have 95% survival chances, irrespective of the tumor biology. That's what we are trying to do here. It was an invasive ductal carcinoma, grade one, no lymphovascular invasion. Next thing I suggest is, like in the lesion I showed you previously, it was so small, isn't it? If you do not know where the lesion is, how are you going to find it? You're going to keep looking all across, all over the breast and find out, find all kinds of lesions, which, you know, is extremely confusing. So whenever you find a lesion on MAMO, try to put a clock face to it and say, okay, it is at one o'clock position, so many centimeters from the nipple. So you can put the ultrasound probe exactly there, find it, biopsy it, right? So we'll do a little exercise here. And we will see that this is a good quality mammogram. The Pictorialist major is at 20 to 30 degrees to the perpendicular here. It is a well exposed mammo, good compression. You're able to see the inframammary fold right here on both the sides. The nipple is in profile, very good quality image. Draw a perpendicular from the nipple to the back of the uh, film and then measure the same on the MLO view. Usually they are within one centimeter of each other in a properly exposed radiograph where the technique, uh, the technologist has a good, done a good job of positioning. <clears throat> so uh, this is a, uh, the technologist did a good job. Look at the subareolar region and the retroglandular area because these are the endangered zones. Look at the Milky Way, so-called towards the axilla in order not to miss a lesion. So here we go, there are nice concave margins of the breast parenchyma where the Cooper's ligaments go attached to the skin there. So you keep following it and then, oops, there's a bump right there, there is a density. So now we're gonna try and localize where is it. We also do notice that when we compare right with the left, we see extra tissue here that is not present here. So that tells you that there's something here. Now you want to figure out, is this a cyst? or a solid lesion. If it's a cyst, you can let it go. So How are you going to use a pointer to show the lesions? So if you if it is a cyst, then you can let it go. But if it's a solid lesion, you will have to biopsy it. Now, how are you going to find this cyst? You have to locate it by ultrasound. And 
Let's go to the next slide, which will tell you how to locate it on the clock face. Now we know that the lesion is present if you drop two lines through the breast. This is the anterior, this is the mid, this is the posterior breast. This is the oblique view, same thing, anterior, mid, posterior breast. You have the lesion in the posterior breast. Look in the posterior breast to find the lesion. Don't try to look in the anterior or middle breast to find it, right? On the CC view, it's clear. On MLO, not so much. So you keep look, 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 and there it is. So you know it is in the upper outer quadrant. Now you want to decide as to which clock position is it in. So we know it is in the outer breast. So it is somewhere near nine o'clock. Is it above or below nine o'clock? You know it is above nine o'clock, right? How far from the center is it? If it is very far, it is 11 o'clock. Let us say nine, 10, 11 o'clock, okay? So I am thinking this lesion is at 10 o'clock and bingo that's where it is it is eight millimeter in size you can see that this is a very small hypoechoic lesion you can easily miss it if you don't decide where is it how far from the nipple is it and then go looking specifically there whenever you find the lesion now you have to assign a birads category right looking at the mammo and ultrasound you're at least going to call it a birads 4c why do we call, give it a birads? This is a way of expressing what percentage chance does this lesion have of being malignant, okay? If it's a 4C, that means I'm thinking it's at least 50 to 95%, 94% certain this is a cancer, right? <clears throat> then the next step is we have to biopsy it. How are you going to biopsy it? Using image guidance because the surgeon can't feel it. It's really small. We can see it. Are we able to see it under MAMO or ultrasound or both? And then you decide, let us say if it's calcification, you don't see it under ultrasound. You have to use mammography to biopsy it. So in this case, it was under ultrasound. So we have to do it. We can do it under MAMO or ultrasound both ways. It doesn't matter. We need it for tissue diagnosis. Why do we need tissue diagnosis? So we can do surgical planning. Does this lesion need to come out or it can stay there because it's a fibroadenoma. We have biopsied it. It is biopsy proven, right? So we need to biopsy. How do we biopsy it? We do core biopsy. Do not do FNA. FNA is not the standard of care for any breast pathology. Use a 14 gauge needle, not an 18 gauge needle. 14 gauge needle, if you're doing it under MAMO, take at least five samples. If you're doing it under ultrasound, take at least three samples, unless it is a cyst and it collapses and then you can't take any more samples. Then the tissue is important. Tissue diagnosis is important. You can see that there is a nodule here in the posterior breast posterior breast and it has a few obscure margin on ultrasound it looks solid there is some shadowing behind it core biopsy shows that is an infiltrative ductal carcinoma with mucinous differentiation this does have a good prognosis it is small in size and the mucinous differentiation cancers have a better prognosis than others whenever we do the biopsy the next step is to do a radiology pathology correlation. What does that mean? It means on radiology, it looks malignant. Pathology came back malignant, so it is concordant malignant. Let us say, so in this, that's how you do the radiology pathology correlation and manage accordingly. So in this case, I'm gonna tell the surgeon, I thought it was malignant, it is malignant, this needs to come out, you can't find it, I can use a needle and wire and localize it for you under ultrasound or mammography, and then you can take it out in the OR. And then what happens? The surgeon takes the patient to the OR and takes the, does the lumpectomy, let us say. He sends us back the specimen. So if I did the localization under ultrasound, I'm going to examine the lesion under ultrasound to make sure that it is present there. So our job is quite extensive in this whole thing. Next case, we're talking about rad path correlation. This lady had a lumpectomy for a cancer and there is a new nodule that she can feel. On ultrasound, it looks terrible. So I'm going to give it a BIRADS-5, right? 
I did the core biopsy and it shows dense hyalinization and fibrosis with foreign body reaction to carbon tattoo. Hmm, what is that? So this is discordant benign, right? I'm doing a rad path correlation. This is discordant benign. Then I look a little bit harder and I realize, hey, this patient had a cancer here that was taken out. That was probably the path of where the biopsy core biopsy was taken. What do we use carbon tattoo for? We use carbon to mark the biopsy tract because if it is non-palpable, the surgeon cannot find it. Either I have to put a clip in there in order to localize it or to put carbon in there. We can't put a clip in a person who has allergy to nickel. And therefore this person had indeed received carbon tattoo in the previous biopsy tract. And so now, it is correlating. So rad path is concordant. It is not discordant. Various ways in which we can detect cancer by looking at masses. Next thing is asymmetry. You can see left breast has a whole lot of tissue present in the outer portion and the same thing in the upper. So upper outer quadrant, there is an asymmetry. Is it an asymmetry that is focal in nature or global in nature? This is a global asymmetry. Now, global asymmetries are benign unless they are palpable, okay? Focal asymmetries are not. They need to be worked up. Don't get distracted by the big thing that's jumping on you from the image. Try to look a little bit harder so you don't miss an additional lesion that is present in the subareolar region, a nodule. <clears throat> we found a solid hypoechoic shadowing nodule. So that's a BIRADS-5, right, or a 4C at least. We do a core biopsy using the 14-gauge needle. See, the needle has passed right through the lesion. And what did it show? Chronic histiocytic infiltrate. Now this is a discordant benign, right? I thought it is malignant, and the pathologist is saying it is not, so it is discordant. Now I'm scared because if I let go of this patient and she comes back with cancer the next time, then I will be to blame, right? So I'm going to take one more sample to make sure that I did not actually miss the lesion while biopsy. And it turned out the same, we got the same pathology second time, so now we are comfortable to let go of it. I showed you a global asymmetry, now I'll show you a focal asymmetry. So asymmetry can be in one view or two views. When it is in two views, then it is more focal. Here is the focal asymmetry. You always compare the right and the, le right and the left breast, and then you see what's different. Mm -mm, there is the density on the right breast in the mid portion, right? And in the same thing, if you draw those lines, it is present in the mid portion right here. When you find it, you have to work it up. How do you work it up? Do a spot compression or a magnification? We do a spot compression. It doesn't go away, right? If it's normal breast tissue, it should go away. Now, we give it a 4A because we're not sure what's going on there. If you give it a 4B, no one's going to hang you for it that, oh, you called it 4A, but look, it's cancer. Ultimately, you have said that I'm worried this lesion does need biopsy. We are going to biopsy it. The proof is in the pudding, right? So <clears throat> we did biopsy it, and guess what we found? Invasive cancer of apocrine type. Now, this was non-palpable, so it required lumpectomy to be removed. And we did a needle localization with the wire. And here is the mass with the speculation present. Awesome. That they looks- can see the cursor moving, awesome. Can you see the cursor moving here? Hello? No, we are unable to see that. Oh, uh, can you? Not able to see? See if you can. No problem. Okay, you can carry on. Okay, so I will. Hey, what I'm going to do is, Dr. L.T. Kishore, he used to keep telling me, you know what, if you're a good radiologist, you should be able to describe the lesion so well that somebody on the phone on the other side is going to know exactly what you're talking about. 
So I'm going to try his method here. So you can see that we have done the lumpectomy, which is on your right side, and you can see a speculated lesion in there. We use needle oak excision in order to remove it. After the surgeon has removed it in the OR, we have obtained the specimen radiograph to confirm that the lesion is indeed present in the specimen, and it is actually present. Look how speculated and nasty it looks. It was an invasive cancer of apocrine type. It was sentinel lymph node was positive for metastasis. It was an ERPR positive and a HER2 negative. So now you see how it is important to work up every abnormality that you see. Do not ignore it. This is the post lumpectomy image of the patient 10 years after the lumpectomy. She is doing well. You can see dystrophic calcifications in the right breast of post-surgical nature. So what I would also like to say here is that breast cancer diagnosis is very traumatic for the patient. Try to um, be mindful of that fact and do not make it like a death sentence when handing it over to the patient. It isn't. Cancer is treatable and um, you know all we have to say yes there is a cancer it can be removed and you have an option of cure we're going to send you to the right surgeon and oncologist to take care of this right now we're going to talk about the left breast here it's a screening mammogram you can see clearly that there is a dense mass in the upper outer quadrant if you look a little bit harder it has all um, little speculation around it don't get distracted by something that's jumping on you straight away. Look a little bit harder. See if you can find anything else, right? You know that cancers can be multifocal, right? Invasive ductal are multifocal in 15% of the cases, bilateral in 5% of the cases. Now, if you look directly behind the dense mass, you will see another tiny speculated mass. Okay, it is barely perceptible, but it is there. If you fail to recognize it and the surgeon only takes out the big one, the small one is still left behind, right? So you have not done justice to the surgeon or the patient. Work a little bit harder, don't get lazy. Look at the other breast also, find out if there's any other lesion. So that's the larger lesion that looks obviously malignant, right? Byrads 5 and the lesion directly behind it is smaller maybe five or six millimeter and it looks bad as well she underwent lumpectomy sentinel lymph node was negative it was invasive ductal on core biopsy this is the post lumpectomy 10 years after the surgery what i'm trying to show you here that cure is possible with breast cancer and please do not hand over a diagnosis of cancer like a death sentence to a patient try to be mindful that can, science has gone far forward and these things are manageable. Next case, if you don't work hard, you are going to miss cancer. And that's what I'm going to show you in this case. In the left breast, you see a triangular marker. That triangular marker is in a place where there is a palpable abnormality. If you look directly underneath it on the CC view, you can vaguely see a hyperdensity. It doesn't look like a mass. It doesn't is there a speculation? Maybe, but you can't be sure. On the ML, MLO view, you don't see anything. So now you have to work it up because something's palpable. You can see it on CC, but you can't see it on MLO. So let's do some spot compression. And on the spot compression, you can see in the middle image, there is indeed a tiny hyperdensity with speculation perhaps. On a magnified view, I think you can appreciate tiny little calcifications within that area. So we did the ultrasound also in the palpable area and directly underneath it, we were lucky to find this mass, which is obviously malignant. What happens is if you don't find a mass, sometimes it might be easy to blow it away and say, I don't think there is a cancer there. Maybe it's just dense breast tissue, but you would be making a mistake. So when you see something abnormal on MAMO, just feel comfortable to do a core biopsy to prove that this is either benign or malignant. Because if you miss it, patient's going to come back to you with metastasis. You don't want that. 
In this case, we're lucky we found a mass, but if we didn't and thought this is dense breast, we might have missed a cancer. And patient might have shown up like this with a bone scan full of meds. Is that what you want? Nope. You're a good radiologist. You're going to find all those cancers. You have an option. So I showed the previous image with the bone meds. When we started looking a little bit harder and looked at prior imaging, guess what we found? That there was a CT scan in which on the, I draw your attention to the right breast. You will see that the right breast nipple is retracted. And if you look at the enhancement, the left and right are different from each other. There's something going on on the image to your left in the right breast. And if you look at the right axilla, you see that there is a lymph node in the second image, right? So the radiologist who saw this CT said, this is abnormal, do a mammogram. The radiologist who worked up the patient thought there is no cancer there. Bad decision. But actually there is. Look at the right side. See the subareolar region. Compare it to the left. Does it look different? Does it look interrupted? Does it look like something's pulling it from behind? It is indeed on the right side. But this was missed. The, it was a spot compression was done as well and an ultrasound was done but because the <clears throat> but because there was no real mass seen on ultrasound it was all a shadowy area behind the nipple be very careful of shadowy areas when you're trying to search for a lesion and you don't see a mass but you see a lot of shadowing be very careful it can be an invasive lobular carcinoma go ahead and core biopsy it. It's no big deal. It's an easy procedure. It'll give you the tissue and give you the diagnosis. But whoever did the diagnostic failed to pick this up. Patient comes back with metastasis. You don't want to be that radiologist who did that. That was invasive lobular carcinoma, the one that I just showed you on the right side with metastasis to bones. This is another case. I showed, I told you that invasive ductal can be multifocal and so can lobular and in this case it is bilateral invasive lobular it can be multifocal in 30 percent and it can be bilateral in 10 percent this lady has bilateral breast cancers just see what the breast looks like the nipples are retracted on both the sides look at how the breast tissue is all just crunching up together this is called the shrinking shrink, shrinking breast okay bilateral invasive lobular carcinoma now i uh, draw your attention to calcifications calcifications are really important if you see them your antenna should be raised that is there a cancer is this a benign calcification is this a malignant calcification so you magnify it look at it and take magnification views in order to determine what type of calcification it is you can pick up half the cancers by just finding calcifications. I promise you that. Now look at the right breast. See in the behind the nipple, if you go in the posterior breast, can you see a bunch of calcifications clustering together? I can perhaps describe them as pleomorphic fine calcifications. The same thing on the MLO view is seen posteriorly overlapping the inferior edge of the pectoralis major. And how are these calcifications arranged? They're like in a linear fashion, right? That's not good. And guess what it was? It was indeed DCIS. Where, where is the doubt? There's no mass, there's just calcification. Now, calcifications are seen only on MAMO. You can't find them on ultrasound. So when we have to remove it, surgeon cannot palpate it and ultrasound cannot find it. MAMO is the only way to go to take it out. Ductal carcinoma in C2 constitutes almost one fourth of the cancers. So, you want, and calcifications are present in 95% of them. So, you can pick up one fourth of the can DCIS, 95% uh, of the DCIS just by calcifications. And in this case, if you look at it, there is the wire that has helped the surgeon localize where the calcifications are. He took everything out and you can see that all the calcifications are in a row extending to 
to take a look at the right hand side of the specimen, you can see that the calcification is extending almost up to the edge of it. Now you have to tell the surgeon, surgeon is still in the OR, he sent you the lump to do the x-ray and tell him, hey, did I get it all out? You have to tell him, I don't think so, because the edge still shows calcifications, you need to take out some more. Because if he doesn't take it out, he has to go back in and do it all over again. And you don't want that for the patient or for the surgeon. So it was indeed, again, DCIS upgraded to invasive ductal. Another DCIS. Look at the upper outer. It's all in a regional distribution in one whole quadrant, right? This is high degree of suspicion for malignancy. Obviously, I don't need to tell you that. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see some of these calcifications are fine, linear appearing calcifications, and some are fine pleomorphic, some are coarse pleomorphic, and are, they are spread out over a large area, right? Now, even if these fine linear calcification, you see only a few of them in one area, you still have to biopsy. In this case, this is a large area. But even if you see this abnormal calcification in a even in a two millimeter area, you still have to biopsy it because the uh, possibility of malignancy is very high. Patient did have <clears throat> high grade DCIS, comediform, she underwent mastectomy and sentinel lymph node excision. That area had multiple foci of invasive ductal carcinoma of up to 1.5 centimeter size on a background of DCIS. DCIS is cancer. In, don't let in situ fool you. DCIS is cancer, except it hasn't gone through the basement membrane here. Now, we just, I always like to look at all the imaging that the patient has, and so does everybody in my practice. We, that's how we practice. And if you look at the CT image, this patient underwent CT scan for follow up of CLL. Look at the right breast. There is abnormal enhancement there. Contrast enhanced CT is actually pretty good at showing subtle differences in enhancement so don't discount it you know that breast cancer is a leading type of cancer in women so why would you not look at the breast when you're doing a ct chest on the patient just take a look at it don't ignore it because here was this cancer present even one year ago so you know it's something to learn next case Left-sided nipple discharge was the complaint in this patient. You can see that on the left side, multiple nodular areas are present beneath the um, areola. And one in the upper outer quadrant has a more dense appearance. So we did the ultrasound. So how do, do you do the ultrasound in bloody nipple discharge? So there are different types of discharges. Out of them, bloody is the most important. Where do you scan for the abnormality when there is um, blood in the discharge. You have to scan in the area in the quadrant where the duct is present, right? There is a discharge from a particular duct. You go search in that quadrant because that is where you're going to find the lesion. And here we found a complex uh, lesion like solid cystic lesions. We gave it a BIRADS 4B. We did the core biopsy. Core biopsy came back papillary lesion with atypia. Whenever it is atypia, obviously excision is advised. And even if there is no atypia in just a papilloma, we ask the surgeon to usually make the decision what he wants to do with it. Again, did lumpectomy after needle wire localization, and there is the lesion. You can see that it is speculated. Aren't the specimen mammograms amazing? They show things even more clearly than you would ever have seen otherwise. So this was a papillary carcinoma. Here I am just showing one image from um, the net because I thought I would remind you that inflammatory breast cancer is a highly aggressive form of malignancy. If a patient comes to you with a thickened red breast that looks inflamed, a surgeon would have given antibiotics, it doesn't go away. You do the ultrasound, you don't find a mass. Um, there is no point trying to do biopsy from the breast tissue present. If you look at the skin, see how it is thickened over the left breast. It is very thick there. That is because the dermal lymphatics are clogged with tumor cells. 
you're not going to get tissue diagnosis by nothing less than a punch biopsy of the skin. We don't do it, the surgeon doesn't. You have to tell the surgeon, you have to do a punch biopsy in order to get the tissue diagnosis. The next image on the right side that I'm showing is just of a young lady who came with a mass and, um, you know, initially it was thought to be a fibroadenoma. A few months down the line, it's just enlarging, multilobulated, hypoechoic, core biopsy showed poorly differentiated cancer. What I'm trying to show you here is poorly differentiated cancers, lymphomas, fast growing medullary carcinomas, they're the ones that look so hypoechoic. In this patient, surgeon wanted, the oncologist wanted to give anterior chemo in order to reduce the size of the lesion. So we were asked to put a clip there. That happens quite often, you know, when there's a large mass, um, they want to give anterior chemo, but they want us to put a clip there. So once the chemo is over, and sometimes these lesions just go away, and then the surgeon doesn't know where to operate in order to confirm is there any residual cancer present or not. Therefore, we put a clip there, they get their chemo. Once all that is done, we localize it for the surgeon and he takes it out, right? It's helpful in patient management. Next case, this is easy peasy, right? This is an ant mini. This is a hamartoma. Don't waste your try time trying to do spot compression and ultrasound to, you know, characterize it further. Why do you have to? Because you're the boss of this diagnosis. It's a hamartoma. Another case, just a mass in the left breast, upper outer quadrant in a 63 year old female, it was enlarging in size, it was not a cyst, it was solid, and it turned out to be on core biopsy phyllotis tumor. Phyllotis are 75% of the time, they are benign, 25% are invasive. But when you have a 25% chance of invasion, obviously this has to come out. Last but not the least, the male breast right side lump. You can see there's a lot of tissuey stuff going on on the right side compared to the left on both the CC and MLO view. I'm just magnifying it to show you on the right hand side image that the entire tissue is, it just looks like normal breast tissue. There's fat lobules present inside it. If you look at the margins of the breast tissue, they're all concave. There's no bump in it or hook in it to suggest that there is cancer. There is no calcification. This is another aunt many. This is gynecomastia. Don't waste your time trying to do further imaging because we want to do most for the patient by using the least amount of money possible, right? And least amount of worry for the patient as well. However, whoever saw the mammogram decided to do the ultrasound. There comes the problem. Now you see a hypoechoic irregular area, increased vascularity, do the biopsy. What a waste of resources. And it came back just normal breast tissue. That brings me to the end of my presentation.